Hi and welcome to Butcher's Best. Today we're going to be making an Italian porchetta roast, which obviously is a pork roast uh, with Italian seasonings. It's really tough to figure out where the porchetta roast actually originated, but mostly say it was in Rome, but it is celebrated throughout the country. So, Italian porchetta roast. What we're going to be doing today is showing you how to cut it, how to spice it, how to tie it, and how to store it. So this is the cut of meat that we're going to be using today. <clears throat> this is a loin, a pork loin, and we're going to be making a porchetta. Now porchetta, uh, typically done, can be done with a, a pork butt or a pork shoulder. In this case, in this case, I'm simply going to use uh, the pork loin because it's easy, easy to deal with, and it's easy to get. Uh, there are some areas where some supermarkets simply don't carry a pork butt or a, uh, a pork shoulder, so you can use a loin. Uh, the more the fat in the piece of meat, like a shoulder or butt, the more flavor you're gonna get out of it. But for those of you who are counting calories or worrying about fat in your diet, a pork loin serves us very, very well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut one time across the top, as you can see, and cut about two thirds of the way through and this is called butterfly. I'm going to butterfly it back a little bit, as you can see. And then I'm going to turn the meat over this way. I'll cut a little bit there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to cut down and in into that fatty portion that, that I still have, the thicker portion that I still have left. And as you can see, I have a nice flat piece of meat. Now I'm going to score it a few times, and the reason I'm going to score it is because you've got a thick piece of meat here. And what you want to do is you want to be able to uh, get the spice and the oil that I'm going to put on here um, into the meat and let it basically let it uh, get absorb, absorbed into the meat. So you get flavor through the entire thing. Now you don't have to go deep, you're just scoring it. And that's that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of meat, I'm going to coat it in some nice olive oil, like so. Rub it in, make sure I get into my crevices, all the way through. Okay, pop it over. Nice coating of olive oil. It will definitely help the spice adhere to the meat, stay on and eventually meld in. So you'll have a nice flavor between the spice and the olive oil. So I've done that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my porchetta spice. This is the way that you'll see it in the supermarket. Um, it'll be the porchetta, Tuscan porchetta spice. And um, if you don't see it in, the, in your, uh, your favorite meat store or um, supermarket, ask them to get it and I'll thank you very much. So. Next step is to liberally dust this with the spice and rub it in. As you can see, it goes from a whiter to a darker color. That means you're getting it in there. And like I said, liberally, okay? Now out of one of those jars that you see there on the counter next to me, you should be able to get probably three or four porchettas of this size. This is about a three pound porchetta, uh, three pound piece of meat. And this will make a great roast for you, for a family of four, maybe get you some leftovers for sandwiches. Because not only is this a great roast, but this makes incredible sandwiches the next day. Okay, so I've gotten a great coating of my porchetta, Tuscan porchetta spice on here. And I just want to make sure that it gets worked in nicely. Now, if you've ever read the instructions that I have, the next thing I tell you to do is basically roll it like a newspaper. And the reason why I do that is you want to get this nice and tight. So when it goes in the oven, you don't lose all the juices. The juices kind of meld into each other and it, 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 and it roasts up really nicely for you. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I have my fat side up to roast. So again, you get all that nice flavor through the meat. I'm going to roll it from basically the bottom side. I'm going to roll it tightly so that it looks something like this. I'm going to kind of tuck it in so that I have a nice cylindrical piece of, of roast there. And that's about it. 
Now what we're going to do next is what probably people consider um, the toughest part, which is actually not the toughest part, which is to tie it so that it doesn't fall apart in the oven. Because what you want to do is you want it to stay together while it's roasting so that all those flavors just kind of meld into each other. So you get a nice, flavorful, juicy piece of meat. Because if you roasted this flat, like we had it out flat, what will happen is it will dry out and you'll get a really, really cardboardy piece of meat. So this helps you get a nice, flavorful piece of meat. There. Now, because people are really kind of intimidated by, by tying this roast, um, what I've done for you is I kind of pre-cut some pieces. And typically for the parts that are going to go around this way, that's probably about a foot. So maybe three pieces for a roast this size. And then we're going to use this to bind it all together. This is a little bit longer. This is probably about two two and a half feet. If you can't, don't have or can't find butcher's twine, go to your local butcher shop. When you buy a piece of meat, ask them, can I get some twine too? They'll be more than happy to do it, I'm sure. Now one of the things is get all the shop objects out of the way because if you get a little careless, you don't want to stick yourself with the knife. So the easiest thing to do, take a piece of string like this, butcher's twine, and I'm just going to just, just give it a very basic knot. Okay, we're going to teach you some knot tying later on. This is basically just a square knot. It's real easy to do. Boy Scout in your family or the Girl Scout in your family can help you um, help you do a square knot if you don't know how to do it. But this is the easiest way, the fastest way. It's not the butcher's way. Um, that's a little bit more difficult. But this will, this will definitely do in a pair of seconds if you want to get something together and get it into the refrigerator for the next day. So something real easy. Doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be anything, because this is just holding it together, and all you're trying to do is to keep the package in one piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this long piece here, and I'm going to slide it underneath here, through here, through here, okay, and then like that, I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to take it through here, okay, through here, and through here. Okay, one of the things that I like to do is I like to kind of twist it around that way, kind of seal the deal, so to speak. Pull up this side, and again, real easy. Square knot, hold it, it'll hold it together. Okay, if you don't, like I said, if you don't know how to do a square knot, Find a Boy Scout. Find a Girl Scout. They'll be more than happy to help you. So that wasn't hard, was it? Okay, now that looks a little bit sloppy. So I'm just going to take my knife and clean it up. So when your guests see it, they'll say, oh, wow, they know how to, they know how to tie a roast. The secret has been revealed, hasn't it? Okay, I'm going to cut this one long one here. Okay, so what you have here is you have a tied roast ready for the oven. But one of the things that I will recommend to you is not to simply put it on the oven. Try a porchetta on the grill. And what I tell you to do is I tell you to sear it um, on a high heat on the grill, side, 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 okay? And then reduce the heat to medium. And then you wanna cook it to, whether it's in the oven or whether it's on a grill, you want to cook it to about 155 internal temperature. Take a good thermometer, stick it into the middle of the roast so you get a very accurate reading, and then look for 155. It'll be juicy, flavorful, and by the time you carve it, it'll be about 160 in internal. Now what I also do is I still take a little bit more because I've worked this thing, and I just put it, I just work it in here and then work some more in here. So what I have here is a well-seasoned porchetta roast. Now this roast is ready for either cooking or for storage. What I recommend you do is you take this roast as we've just prepared it and wrap it or put it in a plastic bag and put it in your refrigerator at least overnight 
uh, if not two days. That'll give the juices a time to work into the meat so that you'll get an incredibly well-flavored meat. The other thing that I would say is you could do this ahead of time. So if you have guests coming next week sometime and you happen to get a really good deal on a pork roast, is prepare it, wrap it, or throw it in the bag, and throw it in your freezer. Now some will say that that doesn't help the flavor of the meat, but I'll tell you, you still get an incredible, incredible piece of meat, flavorful, moist, tender. So try it. And as you can see, it was pretty easy to do that roast. All of our marinades and rubs are designed for you in mind. Something very simple to get a, an incredibly flavorful meal to your table. Thank you for being with me tonight. I enjoyed making the porchetta roast for you, and I hope you'll try it yourself. Again, it's Butcher's Best, and I'm Dave the Butcher. Thank you.